Hello, my amazing students. Today, you're going to improve all areas of your English, and we're going to do that by reading a news article together. Welcome back to J4's English. Of course, I'm Jennifer. Now, let's get started. First, I'll read the headline. Biden administration unveils strictest ever U.S. car emission limits to boost EVs. First of all, do you know what this stands for, EVs? Maybe it will help the fact he's in a car. So the V stands for vehicle and the E stands for electric. So EVs, electric vehicles. And of course, the verb to boost, that means to increase. That's why you're here, right? To boost your English fluency, to boost your vocabulary, to boost your confidence, to boost your English. That's why you're here, right? Put that's right, that's right, put that's right in the comments. Because, of course, you're here to boost your total English fluency. Now, in this article, the Biden administration unveils, unveils. This is another word for reveals. And both of them mean to make known, to show for the first time. And the Biden administration is unveiling, revealing the strictest ever U.S. car emission limits and the reason why they're limiting the emissions, this is what is produced from gas-powered cars, which harms the environment. So they're trying to limit those in an attempt to increase electric vehicles, the sales of. So that's what we're discussing in this article. Now, don't worry about writing all these notes down because I summarize everything in a free lesson PDF. You can find the link in the description. Now let's get into the article so you can boost your English vocabulary. President Joe Biden has announced the strictest regulation on vehicle exhaust emissions ever introduced in the U.S. Okay, so first of all, notice what verb tense is this? President Joe Biden has announced. This is the present perfect. And why are they using the present perfect here? It's a completed past action. So the regulation was announced maybe last week. So this is a completed past action, but there's a result in the present. So now car makers have to follow these regulations. That's a result in the present. So that's why this is in the present perfect. And the president did that in a bid to. So in this case, a bid means an attempt. So notice that article because we have a bid because bid begins with a consonant. But if you use attempt, which has the same meaning, you need an because attempt starts with a vowel sound. In an attempt to accelerate, accelerate means increase the speed or progress of, so to boost it faster, to increase it faster in a bid to. Now, technically, you don't even need those words. You could just say in the U.S. to accelerate the auto industry shift to electric vehicles. And you could just remove in a bid in an attempt and it would have the exact same meaning. Because in English, when you have to accelerate, it can mean in order to accelerate. Let's review these three sentences. To boost your vocabulary, you should subscribe to j for his English. That's right. That's right. You already put it in the comments, but, but, but that's right again. To boost your vocabulary. Here, students, they get confused sometimes. They think this is the infinitive, but technically it's in order to. In order to boost your vocabulary, you should subscribe. But native speakers, we almost always remove the words in order because it's implied based on context to boost your vocabulary. I know this means in order to, because otherwise it's incorrect to start a sentence with the infinitive. So it must mean in order, in order to boost your vocabulary. Now, what about this one? Boosting your English will help accelerate your career growth. 
And that's why you should subscribe to J4S English. That's right. <laughs> so boosting, this is what type of sentence? A gerund sentence for a general statement. How about this one? Subscribe to J4S English if you want to boost your fluency. What type of sentence is this? It's the imperative. It begins with the base verb and I'm giving you an instruction. Subscribe to J4S English click the subscribe button. So I'm giving you that instruction. So this is a very common sentence structure in English. Don't let it confuse you. It means in order, but we just leave that out, which is why you can get rid of all of this and just say in the U S to accelerate the auto industry shift to electric cars. So the industry shift to electric cars. So right now, we use gas powered cars. So the shift would be going from one thing to another. That's why it's the shift to electric cars. You could say the shift from electric or from gas powered cars to electric cars, EVs, electric vehicles. Let's continue. It includes, so this, it represents the regulation. This is the singular noun that was introduced previously. So you can use it when the subject has already been introduced and is known to the audience. It includes, so don't forget that S because you're conjugating it with it, which is present simple third person singular. It includes a target for 60, 56% of all new U.S. vehicles sold to be electric by 2032. A huge increase from current levels. So huge is a great choice. You probably already know this one. To sound a little stronger or to sound more advanced, more formal, you could say a significant, a significant increase increase from current levels or substantial, a substantial increase from current levels. Significant and substantial are also important because they can be used with uncountable nouns like experience. So if you're talking about your experience in a job interview, you should say, I have a significant experience. I have substantial experience, and then you need your gerund verb. I have significant experience creating, writing, preparing, drafting, working on whatever your experience is. Are you enjoying this lesson? If you are, then I want to tell you about the Finally Fluent Academy. This is my premium training program where we study native English speakers from TV, the movies, YouTube, and the news so you can improve your listening skills of fast English, expand your vocabulary with natural expressions, and learn advanced grammar easily. Plus, you'll have me as your personal coach. You can look in the description for the link to learn more, or you can go to my website and click on Finally Fluent Academy. Now let's continue with our lesson. In a concession to car makers, the goal was softened from last year's draft. So remember they're talking about the new regulation. So there's this target for 56% of all new U S vehicles sold to be electric by 2032, but they're saying this was softened, which means that either this number was higher. So maybe 80% or even 60% would be higher or the timeline was sooner. So maybe it was 56% of new car sales, but it was by 2030. So by softening it, they're making it more achievable. They're extending the timeline or they're reducing the, the burden by how much is required. So that would be softening it. The goal was softened from last year's draft. So this is a concession to car makers. When you make a concession, it means you give up something you want in order to make the other person 
happier. So let's say you and your friend, your family, your significant other, your kids, you want to go on vacation and you really want a beach vacation, but the person you're going with does not want to go to the beach. They want to go somewhere else, go on a city vacation. So maybe you make a concession and you say, okay, we won't go to the beach. We'll go to the city. We'll go to Disney World as long as we stay at a hotel with a pool so you can get the beach environment. So you give up something you want, the beach vacation, but you're doing it to make the other person happier. So obviously this happens a lot in negotiations and in this case in politics as well, but it can also be in your everyday lives. Let's continue. But the Biden administration says it will still dramatically reduce planet warming gases. So these are more commonly called greenhouse gases. And the it, again, is the regulation, the regulation it introduced. So it says it, the regulation, will still reduce. Now, dramatically means to a large degree. So you could also say significantly reduce or substantially reduce. And hopefully you'll say, I've dramatically boosted my English. Now notice I've added dramatically as our adverb to modify how much you've increased. I've dramatically boosted my English. And what verb tense is this? I have boosted. I have dramatically boosted. This is the present perfect. And again, it's a completed past action, but there's a result in the present. I've dramatically boosted my English. So now I can get a promotion or travel confidently or whatever you want to do. Wednesday's regulation will prevent 7 billion. So this BN is the short form for billion, 7 billion tons of carbon dioxide emissions. So notice the tons takes the S, but the billion does not. So $7 billion, perhaps that's what Elon Musk earned yesterday, <laughs> $7 billion. The S is on dollars. So here, notice the S is on tons. And then I'll just write billion. So you remember it's in singular because you don't want to say 7 billions tons, 7 billion tons of carbon dioxide emissions over the next 30 years. So Wednesday's regulation, this just means the regulation that was released on Wednesday. So you can just shorten that by saying Wednesday's regulation. Monday's dinner was delicious. Tuesday's speech at work was inspirational. Thursday's lesson was amazing because it boosted my English. So instead of saying the lesson I watched on Thursday, the dinner I ate on Monday, you can say Monday's dinner, Thursday's lesson. Just remember to make the noun possessive. So the, the day, the day of the week, will take the possession. Monday's dinner, the dinner belongs to Monday. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, the new measure increasingly limits year by year the amount of pollution permitted from vehicle exhaust. Okay, so we have pollution from vehicle exhaust. So under the new measure, which is the regulation, Wednesday's regulation, the topic of this article, every year the limit of vehicle exhaust emissions increases. So in 2024, maybe it's 10%, 2025, it's 15%, 2026, it's 20%. So that is the increasingly limits year by year. Every year, the, the limit increases. Car makers that do not meet the new standards will face stiff fines. 
A fine is a financial penalty that you have to pay if you don't follow a rule or a regulation. And stiff is an adjective that describes the fine, the financial pe penalty. And stiff means significant or substantial. We're getting a lot of use out of these two words. It can also mean in this context, severe. That was really severe or that was really harsh. It was more than you expected or anticipated given your actions. So for example, parking ticket, that is a common fine financial penalty that I'm sure everyone here has had at least one parking ticket in their life. So you could say $200 for a parking ticket, that's stiff. So that's a significant amount of money, a substantial amount of money. And considering all I did was park in front of this office, for five minutes, that's pretty harsh or sev severe. So you can say that's stiff, that's stiff. You could also say that's a stiff, that's a stiff fine. So here stiff is describing fine. So if you got rid of stiff, you have that's a fine, fine, not as I'm fine. Fine is a financial penalty, right? So that's a fine. What type of fine? That's a stiff fine. That's a stiff fine. Or you can just say that is stiff. That's harsh. That's severe. That's significant. All right. So hopefully you don't have to say that when you get your next parking ticket. Companies will still be able to make petrol powered vehicles. So petrol, this is another word for gas. This article is from the BBC. Now in North America, we don't really say petrol, although of course we know what it means. We say gas, gas powered vehicles. So long as they are a shrinking percentage of their total product line. So a company, let's take Toyota, their total product line would be all the different types of cars that Toyota sells. I don't know cars. I cannot name one car Camry, Toyota Corolla, Corolla Camry. So those are the cars in the product line, the different types of cars that Toyota sells. So as long as the gas powered cars, is shrinking. It's getting smaller. So you could say my fear of speaking is shrinking as my vocabulary increases. Hopefully you could say that. So shrinking means getting smaller. So I wrote here, my fear of speaking is shrinking, getting smaller as I'm boosting, increasing my vocabulary. So hopefully you relate to this. So put, that's me. That's me. You're getting a lot of use out of this, Put that's me in the comments as well. The U S is taking a more moderate approach than the European union and UK. So moderate approach. I already know that this suggests that the rules, the regulations in the European union and the UK are harsher, are stricter than the U S because the U S is taking a more moderate approach, which will ban all sales of new petrol powered cars from 2035. So in the U S this new regulation is 56% of all new sales must be electric by 2032. But in the European union and UK, they're banning all sales of new gas powered cars in the U S gas powered cars from 2035. Wow. That does sound quite severe, quite harsh because remember ban means not allowed. So if you try to buy a new car in the UK in 2036, it must be an EV, an electric vehicle, because at that point in 2036, gas powered cars will be banned. One of the rare times you can use the future perfect in English by 2036 gas powered vehicles will be banned in the UK. 
I wrote this down for you. By 2036, gas-powered vehicles will have been banned in the UK and EU. Let's continue. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak announced last year he was delaying the British ban by five years from its original deadline of 2030. Whoa, so that's even more harsh when you think about it. But they extended it, probably because that would have been very difficult to implement. The American car industry pointed to slower electric vehicle. So now they're giving you the definition here, electric vehicle. We already learned this is EV. Electric vehicle sales growth in objecting to a draft of the rules last year that would have ensured such vehicles accounted for 67% of all new cars sold in 2032. Let's review this sentence. If the regulation had been passed, because here they had a draft regulation, but this regulation wasn't passed. I know this simply because of the grammar and the fact that this is a conditional. So we have our if clause, and in this case, we have the past perfect. If the regulation had been passed, it would have required EV electric vehicle sales to account for 67% of total sales by 2032, but it wasn't passed. So the regulation that was passed is the current one, and it requires electric vehicle sales to account for 56%. Because remember, it was softened. It was made less severe. So previously, the draft regulation was 67%, but that number was softened to 56%. So it was made less severe. And part of the reason it was softened was because of the slower EV sales growth. So this next line, EVs, electric vehicles, made up less than 8% of all new car sales last year. So I guess that would have been 2023. So to go from 8% to 67% in such a short period of time, perhaps would have been unrealistic. So they softened it to 56%. And remember, they made a concession. So they gave up the government gave up some of what they wanted to make the car makers happy. The Alliance for Automotive Innovation, a trade group representing the car industry, welcomed the slower pace of the rollout. So when something is rolled out, it means that it is gradually introduced. Now, grammatically here, rollout is a noun. I know that because of the sentence structure and I see the article, the rollout. So it must be a noun. The verb form is to roll out. So a phrasal verb, the verb roll, which you conjugate, and then you have your preposition out. And that means to introduce, but is most frequently used as a gradual introduction. We're rolling out the new regulation this year year. So this is in what verb tense? We're rolling out present continuous because it's in progress now. We're rolling out the new regulation this year. So it means they're introducing it this year, but most likely it will be a gradual introduction. So this year, perhaps 10% of sales must be EVs next year, 15, next year, 20, next year, 25. So they're rolling it out. It will be gradual or this year, this part of the regulation is effective next year. Another part is effective. So different parts are introduced at different times as well. So that's the phrasal verb to roll out com most commonly used with government proposals, plans, but it can also, of course, be used with companies, proposals, plans, and schools, institutions, anyone's proposals or plans. And it can be used as the noun, the rollout, or a rollout. 
So the Alliance for Automotive Innovation welcomed the slower pace of the rollout. So the introduction is going to be slower. So every year, perhaps less of a percentage is required. Now, notice I went from here, the Alliance for Automotive Innovation, the name of this group, to here. Because this information in the middle between the commas is additional information, but you can delete it entirely from the sentence because grammatically this verb is conjugated with the subject. So this has nothing to do with the grammar of the sentence. The Alliance for Automotive Innovation welcomed the slower pace of the rollout, but said the goal was still extraordinarily ambitious. Let's review these two sentences. That's extraordinary. So if you told me you just got a promotion because you boosted your English fluency and felt so confident going to job interviews and communicating that you got a promotion, I would say that's extraordinary. So that's really amazing. That's really great. So that's extraordinary without any other context. It sounds like a positive thing. So extraordinary is an adjective, but here that's extraordinarily adverb, notice the pronunci pronunciation, that's extraordinarily ambitious. That sounds more like a negative thing because extraordinarily sounds too much, more than expected. So more ambition than needed or wanted. So notice as an adjective, that's extraordinary pronunciation. That's extraordinarily extraordinarily adverb ambitious. So make sure you're using those two words correctly and also that you have your pronunciation correct. And that's the end of our article. So what I'll do now is I'll read the article from start to finish and this time you can focus on my pronunciation. So let's do that now. Biden administration unveils strictest ever U.S. car emission limits to boost EVs. President Joe Biden has announced the strictest regulation on vehicle exhaust emissions ever introduced in the U.S. in a bid to accelerate the auto industry shift to electric cars. It includes a target for 56% of all new U.S. vehicles sold to be electric by 2032, a huge increase from current levels. In a concession to car makers, the goal was softened from last year's draft, but the Biden administration says it will still dramatically reduce planet warming gases. Wednesday's regulation will prevent 7 billion tons of carbon dioxide emissions over the next 30 years, according to the Environmental Protection Agency. The new measure increasingly limits year by year the amount of pollution permitted from vehicle exhaust. Car makers that do not meet the new standards will face stiff fines. Companies will still be able to make petrol powered vehicles so long as they are a shrinking percentage of their total product line. The U.S. is taking a more moderate approach than the European Union and U.K., which will ban all sales of new petrol-powered cars from 2035. U.K. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak announced last year he was delaying the British ban by five years from its original deadline of 2030. The American car industry pointed to slower electric vehicle, EV, sales growth in objecting to a draft of the rules last year that would have ensured such vehicles accounted for 67% of all new cars sold in 2032. EVs made up less than 8% of all new car sales last year. The Alliance for Automotive Innovation, a trade group representing the car industry, welcomed the slower pace of the rollout, but said the goal was still extraordinarily ambitious. Did you like this lesson? Do you want me to make more lessons just like this? If you do, then put let's go, let's go, put let's go in the comments. And of course, make sure you like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. 
And you can get this free speaking guide where I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. You can click here to download it or look for the link in the description. And why don't you keep improving your English with this lesson right now?